As long as I can remember, people have frequently talked about how everything seems to be made in China. And it's true, because China is the world's largest exporter in terms of the number of goods, but also the value of everything that they export. China absolutely dominates global trade and they manufacture so much of what the world consumes. But there is one product that they definitely are not the leaders in, and that is silicon computer chips, which are in all our devices, and they're known as semiconductors. Semiconductors power the modern world and all the technology that runs our devices that we use today. And Taiwan is the leader in this industry, with their company TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, which dominates 92% of all global computer chip manufacturing. No company or government is even close to replicating the highly specialized and insanely large semiconductor plants that have been built over decades and with hundreds of billions invested. In fact, TSMC makes up nearly half of Taiwan's entire GDP, valued at $420 billion in a country with a GDP of $850 billion. However, Taiwan and TSMC's crucial yet delicate manufacturing of these chips is vulnerable to threats at the international level. To understand the situation around Taiwan and why they've been caught in the middle of a dangerously competitive rivalry between the US and China, it's important to understand the history of Taiwan's status as an independent country. China says that they rightfully own Taiwan and plan on having it rejoin the motherland, if not peacefully, then by force. The reason for this lies in Taiwan's history of going through phases of invasion and independence. Taiwan was a part of China for hundreds of years, until 1895 when Japan invaded and then ruled over the island for 50 years, eventually giving it back by the end of World War II. But shortly after, in 1949, the nationalists lost to the communists in the Chinese Civil War, where they retreated to claim the island and then called it the Republic of China also known as Taiwan. Mainland China became the People's Republic of China, and Taiwan continued to oppose this communist party as it began representing a more Western government and economy. For decades, the PRC has said that they plan on reclaiming Taiwan, especially as it's grown into a more independent and strong economy with more connections to the West and with it becoming now a global superpower in semiconductor manufacturing. In the 21st century, the semiconductor industry has become a critical part of the modern world, and it's grown even more complicated. Current chips are mostly designed in the US. Resources and ingredients used to make these chips are primarily sourced from other countries like Japan and Germany. And then the most difficult and important part of the process, the manufacturing, is done in Taiwan. TSMC's semiconductors are used in nearly all important civilian and military computer systems. Most of Apple's products, including all the iPhones since the iPhone 6, contain chips made by TSMC in Taiwan. Military equipment like drones and weapons and many other important devices are dependent on the chips that are made by TSMC. One of the key factors that have contributed to TSMC's success is its incredible innovation and development in specializing while also massively scaling their chip manufacturing. The company has consistently reinvested into research and development and has built a reputation for its ability to produce high quality chips from the latest and constantly improved production technologies. The company has teams of highly skilled engineers and designers who work closely with customers like Apple, Nvidia, and Intel to develop customized chips to meet their specific requirements. They are an essential partner to many of the world's leading technology companies, with their businesses being highly dependent on TSMC's operations. China's president, but more like dictator, Xi Jinping has repeated that Taiwan belongs to China and that they will reclaim it as part of the motherland. This could be a situation that turns into something similar to what we've seen between Ukraine and Russia. The big difference is that Taiwan is an essential trade partner to both sides of the conflict and serves such an important element to the economies of both and really the world. When it comes to the world's two largest economies, neither the United States nor China can afford to lose the plants located in Taiwan that are responsible and dependent on for the production of such critical components in the modern world. Just based on how dependent the world is for TSMC, a Chinese invasion on Taiwan would pose two massive risks for the world. And that would be TSMC sabotaging their facilities, like a, if I can't have it, then no one will kind of situation. Because if China takes claim of it, then essentially destroying it would mean the same thing, except then China wouldn't be able to have it. But that's of course assuming that China would cut off everyone else if they were to claim Taiwan and TSMC. And I think it's a pretty safe assumption. The second big risk is these facilities getting damaged or destroyed as a result of collateral damage from war on the island between China, the US and associated allies. Both sides seem to be well aware of these risks to Taiwan's uniquely critical role in the global economy. 
and this helps create what's called the Silicon Shield. The country and their dominance in the chip making industry is simply too big to fail. And the recent chip shortage would only be scratching the surface compared to the problems that an invasion on Taiwan would create. Tensions recently escalated with the US Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan this past summer. This visit was a move by the US meant to send yet another message that they stand with Taiwan and its independence. China engaged in military intimidation before, during, and after Pelosi's visit to Taiwan as they ramped up military drills in the oceans near Taiwan's coast. Taiwan did their own military drills and had jets fly up and down the coastline. It was essentially a battle of drills and military exercises, and China even produced and released a video showing off their military and that they were prepared to defend their mainland. And the US had deployed four of their 11 aircraft carrier warships near Taiwan. But despite all these clear signs of military support by the US for Taiwan, Washington remains consistent in their strategic ambiguity in reference to Taiwan as an independent nation. According to a statement posted by Nancy Pelosi, all they claim to be doing is celebrating and respecting Taiwan's flourishing democracy and economy. Because while China has been strict about preventing Taiwan representatives from attending international meetings, and according to Pelosi's statement, they cannot prevent world leaders or anyone from traveling to Taiwan to pay respects to its flourishing democracy. Only a handful of small countries actually consider Taiwan as a real sovereign independent nation. And these are ones that China does not see as diplomatic threats. And there's a reason for this. The US has still not explicitly recognized Taiwan as an independent state and for good strategic reasons involving China. But it can be pretty easily inferred that the US much prefers Taiwan as an independent nation just based on the statements made by current and former presidents that have all pretty much said the US would support and defend Taiwan in the event of an invasion. The US has engaged in considerable trade with Taiwan for military weapons in order to arm the vulnerable nation in case of a move by China. Not only is Taiwan of considerable interest politically, economically, and technologically, but it's in a very strategic location that is situated in the middle of East Asia and right next to the middle of China's coast, along what's known as the First Island Chain. Geographically, Taiwan is in the middle of an important strategic series of islands outside China's entire coast, in which almost all are either allies of or under the influence of the United States. If China were to gain control of Taiwan, it would weaken the United States' dominance in Eastern Asia and give China a powerful advantage over the US and its allies in the event of a war. Back to the technology side of things, the US is fully aware of the strategic economic mistake that it made in being too dependent on Taiwan for the most essential components of modern technology that run the world. But the US does have a plan to rely less on Taiwan for manufacturing its semiconductors. Biden visited TSMC's new $40 billion chip manufacturing facility in Arizona, and it's going to be the first of two new semiconductor plants that are being built in the US. There's already one in Washington state. The Phoenix factory is expected to be completed by 2024, and it's being celebrated not only for the 20,000 jobs that it will help create, but it marks the start of an expansion effort for TSMC pushed by the US to eliminate the risk of having all their facilities subject to an invasion from China. TSMC has their 10 best facilities exclusively in Taiwan, and then additionally two in China and one in the US. Apple and its CEO, Tim Cook, have expressed excitement for these new opportunities to pivot away from manufacturing in Taiwan and China and to bring the production back to the US. The focus on producing more semiconductors in the US has been made even more of a priority since the chip shortage that started during the COVID pandemic. The 2022 Chips and Science Act helped massively subsidize chip manufacturing to bring more of it to the US. This is just one of many initiatives to reduce dependence on overseas suppliers, especially with the tensions between China and the US over Taiwan. China's state-owned Global Times criticized the deal saying, Washington's selfish policies and trade protectionism will undermine the development of Taiwan's semiconductor industry and result in an erosion of manufacturing. China's electronics industry sources 60% of its chips from TSMC. So it makes sense that they would be concerned about TSMC shifting manufacturing away from Asia into the safer but more expensive labor in the US, which has strongly encouraged and facilitated this move as seen in the Chips and Science Act. International policy experts anticipate that China will likely make an attempt to invade Taiwan within the next five years. The reason China is expected to soon make a move in reunifying with Taiwan is because many different areas of data suggest that China is currently past its peak including an overall population growth, and with its working class population already having peaked many years ago. The country is also in extreme levels of property debt, fueled by their ambitious infrastructure plans in the face of COVID and a weak global economy. While considering the slow decline of China, 
it's not hard to imagine that in the future, they would weigh the risks a bit differently compared to how they likely are right now. However, today's China has an untested, inexperienced military that is large, but with no history of success. A war with the US and its allies would prove to be very difficult, and they would likely need to leverage their cyber warfare capabilities to give them any kind of shot at winning. The US is equally or more strong than China in their cyber capabilities, and I have a whole video talking about cyber warfare, so if you're interested in that, check out this video and then come back to this one. Currently, China needs Taiwan-made semiconductors just as much as the US does. So the question is, would it be worth taking over Taiwan while risking destruction of TSMC factories just to monopolize the chip making process and completely cut off the US from trade? Well, maybe they could look at it like this. Regardless of who wins, if TSMC factories are destroyed in the process, then the US will lose their source of semiconductors as well. If they succeed, then they are basically guaranteed to become the next global superpower for the rest of the century by dominating technology. But if they lose, then it would be a national embarrassment and would lose their reputation, geopolitical influence, and overall legitimacy. So to summarize, a failure while invading Taiwan would risk the world's supply of critically important advanced computer chips, it would ruin the reputation and status of the Chinese Communist Party, and it would set them back even further where their decline becomes even steeper. It kind of sounds to me like China has no choice but to decide between failing as a country or risk failing an invasion of Taiwan, but with the potential to establish themselves as the dominant global superpower with full control over the future of technological developments, but while also risking no one having these advancements at all. Unless something seriously dramatic happens and changes international policy, then we have to consider a Chinese invasion on Taiwan a real possibility, especially with Xi Jinping in power. That's all I got for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.